Hi everybody, this is Kim. I'm back again with another video, another recap of the shy. Don't forget to subscribe, leave a comment, click the thumbs up button. If you haven't seen some of my other videos, I'll leave them at the top or you could click on the end clips, the clips at the end of the video and it'll take you straight to some of the other recaps. This is episode number eight. Let's get it started. Now this episode start off with Reggie and Q as Sonny's um, chicken spot. And you remember from the last episode, Reggie had him, had Q him up. I mean, Reggie made Q sit down and they start talking and everything. Yeah. And um, Reggie goes to tell Q, you know, Trice messed me up bad, you know? And he was like, yeah, you lucky. Cause back in the day, you know, I basically would have killed you and turned around and screw your girlfriend just for good measure so you got off easy so right when reggie was finna say right when reggie was getting ready to kill q sony gets up hit him in the head with a gun or whatever with something they didn't show what he hit him with and knock reggie out and q gets up and was like man i can't believe we let this little youngster drop both of us and um then Sonny pulls a gun out on Rich on um Q and say basically I'm done with this. You need to get out my shop. I don't want to have nothing to do with none of this. You know, and, and Q thought he was playing, but he was he was for real. He was for real. And he threw the whistle at um Q, I guess, as saying, you know, we done. We have no more ties. I'm I'm just washing my hands with you. It goes to Ronnie, and Ronnie is at um Mildred's house and you know remember he was already at Mildred's house he had passed out and um Mildred is like what's going on with you and they sitting there talking or whatever and Mildred see that he's really in pain and he need help and so they got some dope head doctor, doctor in the back and so he called the doctor up to basically help Ronnie so now Brandon is waking up he slept on Jerrica's couch and you know, and now they talking and Brandon want to know what are they doing? Of course, she don't really want to talk about it. And then she asks him, you know, um, you know, what are you doing? You know, you just quit your job. And he's saying, well, you know, we already talked about that. You know, I'm just trying to figure out what's going on with us. And so she was he was telling her that he just want to start something on his own, but it takes money. And so she was telling him. You know, if you go ahead and sign the papers to your mother's house, you'll have some money. You'll have some money to, to do what you want to do. So she tell him, hey, I got a big inspection. You know, it's a, a developer. He bought a couple of houses in the area and your mother going to sell a house, whether you like it or not. She's just trying to make a clean start and you you need to be on board with it. You need to, to, to do this. So now it's on um, Emmett. And Emin is sitting at the kitchen table, you know, looking at his phone or whatever. And his mother asks him, you know, what are you going to do about, you know, your son or whatever. And she's, he like, you know, today is my off day. This is the first day. I don't have to push a stroller or do this or do that. You know, I just want to chill. And she tells him, you know, it ain't like a day off. This is your child. And he was like, yeah, I love him, you know, but... I'm just, I'm just re really trying to regroup. And she tells him a story about when, you know, when she had him and he finally say, okay, I'll go and I'll check on him. And then he asks her, well, what are you going to do? And she's saying, you know, I'm not going to do nothing. You know, I was let go. And he was like, are you all right? And she was like, well, I'm fine. It ain't nothing you have to worry about. So now it goes to Brandon and he's at his mother house and he finally signed the paper so she could sell the house, you know. So I guess the, it's gonna happen. They gonna sell this house. Now it's on Q. Q is at Reggie's house. One of his 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 crew members or whatever they call him, one of his partners is standing over Reggie like, hey Q, you know, he's coming back. So Reggie gets up and Q grabs his wallet, Reggie's wallet and say, you know what? When, when I had a crew, I used to always tell my boys, never carry your wallet. So if something happened, 
You know, nobody will know where you live. You know, none of your rival um, enemies or whatever will know where you live and your family will be safe. So he kind of showed Reggie the wallet and he said, you know, who live here with you? And he was like, nobody. And he was like, well, who room is that back there? And he was like, you know, that's my parents' room. And he said, well, where are they? My father, and Reggie says, my father is doing a bid uptown, upstate, and my mother is basically gone. So then Reggie looks over, he's looking around and everything, and he looks over at Jake's backpack. But Jake isn't there because Jake is over at Kevin's house playing the game. They sitting around playing the game and everything. And Kevin and Papa tell Jake, you know, we worried about you. You know, and he was like, you ain't got nothing to be worried about. I'm good, you know. Yeah, Jake tell him, you know, don't worry about me. I'm finna get paid. And he talking about paid doing what? And he was like, why y'all? He just basically asking him, why y'all all on me, you know? And Papa curse. And here he go with his charm. Papa be now, Ronnie is laid on the floor and this doctor is trying to fix him. He makes up all kind of stuff, some alcohol, some liquor, and some other kind of stuff. And he tell Ronnie, it's going to hurt. So he poured that little mixture of alcohol <laughs> on Ronnie and Ronnie starts screaming. Then, so I guess this doctor kind of know what he's doing. He's doing some old Boy Scout stuff because I ain't never seen no crap like this. But, you know, Ronnie got to do it because he can't go to the hospital because then it's a gunshot wound. They're going to, you know, ask questions. So now it's on um, Jada. She's back at Ronnie's grandmother's house. And she's just trying to make sure that, that you know, she's all right because, you know, she got fired. So she, she don't even work for this lady no more. So she, um, after telling her about her medicine and all of those stuff, Jada opens up a can of soup and hand her her medicine tell her to take it and she said you don't have to worry about me i, I figured out a whole routine to to remind me how to take my medicine she, she asked jada was this her day and she was like well you know i was thinking about what you said about church i've been thinking about church so i guess that's the way she you know gonna stay in contact with this lady i guess she's gonna start going to her, her church. So, um, Brandon is at his cousin's house trying to convince him to loan him some money for that food truck. And his cousin like, you know, where your business plan at? And he was like, I don't need no business plan. You my cousin. And he was like, no, you need a business plan if you want to borrow some money from me. And so then some Chinese dude come and, and Brandon's like, who is that? He was like, that's my tenant. And he was like, he live in your closet? And he was like, yeah. <laughs> so Brandon goes in and check out the the closet and everything. He was like, he got a flat screen TV in there. He's like, I know we hooked that up last night. But anyway, uh, <laughs> so he was like, see, that's what I'm saying. You have to have more streams of in income coming in in order to take more risk. And he was like, okay. And then his cousin tell him, okay, I'll, I'll go ahead and, and do it. I'll go on along. So now Q is still sitting around at Reg's house, which I don't get. I don't understand. What the hell is he waiting on? It looked like they've been sitting around for hours. Because at first it was, it, it looked like it was daytime, and now it looked like it's getting kind of dark. But it could be the fact that they switched rooms. I don't know. But I don't get the whole sitting around thing. It, that's just dumb to me. So then he asked him, are you expecting company? And Red's like, no. And he was like, okay, so what do you know about me? And he was like, you know, that you and Trice go, go back. And he was like, yeah, and I left and I put Trice on. Did he, you know, did he tell you so that? So then he said, um, did Trice tell you to do me? Red's never answered. He's just kind of looking around. I don't think Trice even know that Reg was going to do this. I think Reg is doing it because of his ego. Trice kicked his ass and he feel like Q got to pay for that. Because I got my ass kicked, now you got to die for that. But the tables turn. So now Q is just sitting there and he's telling him, you know, um, you basically finished. He telling, he telling Reg, you basically finished. You know, He's probably looking for somebody right now. He, Reggie don't understand. You made a huge mistake. So 
Q is trying to get in his head and he's trying to tell him, you know, um, you're disposable to 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 um Trice. Trice is probably gonna get one of your boys to do you, to kill you, and he gonna make them the soldier. I may mean, make them the captain now. You know, you disposable. You mean nothing to Trice. So Q just basically trying to get some information out of Reg. He asks Reg about the cop that he saw um, Trice talking to. And try and, and uh, Reg is like, no, I don't know. Reg ain't trying to give him no information right now. He ain't trying. He's just still trying to hold his G or be be the man or you know. He's still trying to be strong and, and, and make it seem like he's not scared. Q tell him, sooner or later, you're gonna have to make a decision. You're gonna have to, you're gonna have to do something. So then he was like, oh, okay. So he called Q called one of um Q called one of his boys over. And now Reggie looking a little nervous. He looking real, real nervous because he thinking that this this is gonna happen. So now um Emmett and Keisha is in the park having a little romantic picnic and um, Emmett see this father and son playing, you know, ball. They just throwing the baseball and he's like, you know, I need to get Emmett. I mean, I need to get EJ a, um, a T-ball set. And he was, she was like, ain't he too old, too young for that? And he was like, yeah, I'm just saying, you know, my father ain't never did too much of nothing for me, you know. And so he was she was she was asking him basically, do you know, do you even know where EJ is? And he was like, Yeah, he went his mama. Now Ronnie and uh, Mildred and two other guys, the doctor and the other dude that be with Mildred. They all sitting on the couch and, and Mildred wanna know what everybody wanted to be. For some reason, Ronnie don't want to answer. So now Emmett goes to his baby mother's house. And her mother comes to the door and she starts talking crazy to him, like, what you want and this, this and that. And, you know, I'm not supposed to tell you where she at. And and then she she he tell her, you know, I just want to be a good father. That's it. I just want to see my son. I miss my son. And so then she says, well, she didn't tell me to not say where EJ is. So she tell him. Now, um... Brandon and his cousin look like they're at the junkyard and the cousin is like okay I got I'm gonna show you something he said just keep an open mind and so Brandon was like okay so then he was like here it is and Brandon is looking at it and he like I love it and the cousin is looking at him like what <laughs> Brandon was like I love it man you know I know it I know it needs a little work, but I love it. You know, I'm going to fix it up. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. So then he handed him the keys. And he was like, he was like, these are the keys? And he was like, yeah. You know, he, then Brandon asked him to go, you know, take a ride. Well, his cousin was like, I can't be seen in there. He was like, this is all you. You know, I'm going to be a silent partner in this. Just hit me when the money start coming in. He was like, all right. And then he walk off. So now Ronnie, Mildred, they still in the in the kid in the um living room. And Mildred tell them, wake up, wake up. Ronnie open his eyes, but the doctor don't. And they like, man, he done crossed over. So he kind of nudge him or whatever. And Ronnie's like, you know, we was just talking. And he was like, no, he done took all these pills. He done crossed over. And so the other dude kind of <laughs> he kind of run away. Cause he's scared for some crazy reason. So then he tell Ronnie, you know, I'm I'm Mildred tell Ronnie, I'm cashing in them chip, one of them chips. You owe me. And plus, the doctor saved your life. So I'ma need you to handle this. So now they they taking them and putting them inside the car, and it's up to Ronnie to take her. So up. Ronnie goes into the guy wallet to see um where he lived and everything and he gets his license and now um he hops in the car he putting his fingerprints all over the car and everywhere but ronnie finna take him home even though he's dead <laughs> he put him in the back seat throw a cover on him make it look like he's asleep and now ronnie on his way. so now kevin 
and his friends is back from the store. They back at Kevin house and, and they still trying to tell Jake, you know, we worried about you. And he was like, man, I ain't got nothing to worry about. You know, Reg got me. And he was, they was basically telling him, Reg can't protect you all the time. And, um, Jake let it slip the fact that Kevin shot somebody. Papa didn't know that. So once Jake walked off, Papa said, man, what the, what, what, what are you talking about? And he was like, man, he ain't talking about nothing. And he would then Papa, Papa tell him, real friends don't keep secrets from each other. And he throw the bag at, at when well, he hand Kevin the bag and he walk off and Kevin just kind of looking. Emmett is at his baby mama's house and he's just kind of looking around and stuff. And I'm not for sure, but it looked like he walked straight through the door. I don't even know if he knocked on the door. But he walks into the house and then you see the girl walks out. So the baby mama name is Tiffany. I didn't know that. <laughs> so now Emmett is just basically questioning her like, who house is this and where you at? So you know, Tiffany kind of go in on him and says, you know, a month ago, I couldn't even get you to acknowledge the fact that this was your kid. So now Emmett is telling her, well, you think you could jump in, <laughs> in and out of his life when you feel like it? And she basically saying, you know, I didn't have him for two years. And you only had him for two weeks. And you basically, you want a trophy for that? You know, how you know I wasn't going through something? You know, did you did you even ask that? They just kind of going back and forth and all that old stuff. And he's telling her he missed his son. And he was actually getting ready. He was going to get the, ba the baby diaper back. And she was like, she was like, you can't just come in here and take my son. If, you know, if you want to. He was like, I'm his father. I have rights too. And she was like, you know, if you start, if you pay some child support, then we'll talk about visitation. And he like, you gonna hold some money over my son's head? And she was like, you know, I gotta pay for diapers, clothes, school, all these different things. She basically telling him, you know, she broke. And she need help and she need money. So she tell him, put some money in our pockets. And then she say, stay away from my baby or I'm gonna call the police. And he like, you gonna call the police on me? On me? <laughs> so then somebody comes out the back, which is her boyfriend. And he say, everything all right, baby? And he look and he see she talking to some dude. She talking to Emmett or whatever. And he just, he got an apple in his hand and he cutting it. He cutting the apple with the knife and, and just basically trying to intimidate Emmett. Of course he do, because you know, Emmett's soft anyway. Emmett, Emmett ain't with that life at all. But he a good dude. Ain't nothing wrong with y'all good dudes, I'm just saying. <laughs> so Emmett was like, you know, all right, okay. He put the diaper bag down and he walks out the door and he leaves. So now Q and them is sitting at the table, they eating. Oh boy, just cooked up a whole, you know, pasta meal. And Reg is looking around. He's keep he keep looking at the clock. It's eight o'clock now. So they basically been there all doggone day. Just sitting around doing nothing. But if, yeah, I guess this is a whole point behind this. I guess. <laughs> so then Jake walk in the door. And they hop up and old boy goes to the wall. So, you know, he getting ready to kill whoever it is come through the door. So Jake is, is standing there. He looking kind of nervous or whatever. And Reg is looking kind of nervous because he don't know what they going to do. He know these is real killers. They ain't about no play play. So Q gets up and he got a knife in his hand. And he was like, you know, I thought that you was just running with Reg the other day at the block party. But, you know, now that you blood... So now he's walking toward Jake and uh, Reg kind of kind of moved forward like he finna, you know, try to save his little brother because he think that Q is going to kill him, you know, because Q is walking toward him with the knife. So as Q get close to Jake, he said, I need you to do something for me. And he was like, OK. And then he hand Jake the knife and was like, I need you to put this in the sink for me. I thought he was going to stab him or something because they've been there all day and Reg ain't giving them no type of information. So then Q, Q sits back down and he tell Reg was like, you know, you could go places with, with your little brother. It's just, you know, as long as you keep him out of trouble and keep him alive. And he was like, okay, so let's talk about that cop again. 
Red is finna spill the beans because he don't want nothing to happen to his little brother. So he finna tell it all. He gonna tell the dude name, you know, it's this Detective Wallace. So Red start telling him about Detective Wallace, the fact that Wallace get a cut of everything and he makes sure that the police don't jam them up. So then Q asked him, well, what about the basketball player? And he was like, ain't nobody saying nothing about him. You know, I promise, I'm dead ass serious. I don't know nothing. All alone, um, Jake is just standing next to the sink, you know, just kind of looking nervous and just kind of looking at what's going on. You could clearly tell Jake is pissed and mad and scared all in one. He don't know how the hell to feel because remember, you want to be the man and you want to be a part of this, you know? So this is what comes with it. This grown man stuff, like they said in ATL, the movie ATL, you know? So don't think it's just all about the money. And I think that's what Jake think. Jake think that we finna get paid and I'm finna do this. I'm gonna have all this because now he's walking. He got a little necklace on, little jewelry on and all that stuff. New kicks, new, new gear. That's what he think it is. He think it's all about the money. No, this grown man stuff, this grown people business and you could get killed. He's seeing that tonight. So then Red say, you know, I'll do anything. What you want me to do? So Q say, come here. He whispered something in his ear. I heard him say something about keep it between us. They get up and he said, hey Jake, stay healthy. Now Ronnie is at the doctor's house and he honks the horn, hurry up and get out the car and he hides behind some tree. And the doctor's wife, um, comes out and you can tell she's pissed and kind of shake him or whatever and she noticed he's dead. So Brandon pulls up to Jerica house in that um in that truck. He's he's blowing the horn and calling her name and <laughs> she comes out and he like, what do you think? And so then he starts just showing her the vision. You know, you can tell she's happy for him and he's so excited to get this started. And um, and he basically tell her, I can't, I can't do this without you. you. Know, and he tell her, all this is great, but it's nothing without you. And he, you know, tell her he's sorry and it'll never happen again and all that stuff. And so she walks up to him and or either he pull her to him, but anyway it go, they they start kissing. So I guess Jerrica and Brandon is back together. I'ma knock this damn background down. <laughs> I keep on bumping it. So now it's, it's, you know, the next day, and I guess Ronnie, he just tired of walking around, feeling the way he feel. He ended up going back to where Common is. He ended up going back over there to him, and, and he's asking him different questions, like, you know, did you kill somebody? And Ronnie don't really want to answer. So then he starts, Rafi starts telling um, Ronnie what he been through, the fact that he did time in jail and all that stuff, and Ronnie is just kind of listening. So after Common tell him, Ronnie, what he went through and how he end up in the Muslim religion, he just come to Ronnie and he just basically give him a hug. And Ronnie hug him and he just start crying. And basically that's how this episode end. Don't forget, to subscribe thumbs up the video leave me some comments at the bottom let's talk about this episode or the previous episodes <laughs> I'm gonna knock this thing down but <laughs> let's talk about this episode y'all I see y'all in the next one peace